Hello and welcome to this SQL tutorial with me, James from Matador Software. Today, we've got three SQL common types of practice problems or interview questions. So if you want to refine some of your skills in more sort of real world scenarios for your SQL querying, well, feel free to, to stay tuned and um, maybe even pause the video if you're not sure and try and figure some of these out. So the first question we have, show the date of the first order ever made in the orders table. Take only the date part of date time. So you can see the orders table, simple sample table, 10 rows, um, an integer column for order IDs and a date time column for order dates. And we want this expected output where we just get the date of that very first order. So feel free to pause here, try to figure it out. Um, and as I say, there's a hint at the bottom. So you may want to think about data type conversions and aggregations. Now here's the answer to our first beginner friendly question, the date of the first order ever made in the orders table where we just take the date part. So the answer we need to do select, convert the date and the min, the minimum order date as first order from orders. So the min aggregate function is used to find the minimum value or lowest value of a column or expression. So unlike some other ab aggregations like count where you can count star everything, we need the specific column. And then we can go in and convert the data type to date. So a fairly simple first question. And the next question, a lot more generic, find the last date of the next month in SQL Server 2012 and above. So it doesn't even matter uh, about the data set you're using. Anyone can do this in SQL Server. So again, you can pause, but there is a hint. In 2012 and above SQL Server, there's a specific date function that can handle this. So if you want to do some research and you want to pause, you can do a bit of research about that specific date function in 2012 and above. And here's the answer. So we need to declare a variable so we can declare the current date and the date data type as get date, that function which returns today's date. And then we can run our select query. So the end of month, the EO month function, we again reference that current date, today's date, the variable, and we need the number one as the offset of next month's date. And then we alias it as last day of next month. So the end of month function returns the last date of the month of a specified date, and it has an optional offset. So afterwards, where zero would be the current month, one would be the next month, minus one offset would be last month, and then you can go ahead and repeat this. So two would be two months time and so on. Now in previous versions uh, of SQL Server below 2012, you would have to use date add and date diff functions. So this is actually quite a good time saver. Okay, so here's this episode's more intermediate question. Company developers would like a random list of orders for testing on the application. Randomly show 50% of all orders as per the order ID column. So we want a random assortment of 50% of our order IDs. So five orders, and it can be any. Um, and this is real world because you'd usually have a transactional system, your SQL databases, and you would have a proprietary app. So people would likely want to test this. Remember though, you might not return the same results because we get random results, but you'd want that 50%. And there's a hint, there's a specific SQL Server RFC 4122 compliant function that can assist with this. So do your research if you don't know how to get this random assortment. But note, this particular solution may have performance issues on larger tables. Okay, so this answer may be simpler than it seems. You select the top 50% of order IDs from orders, but we order by this new ID function. So, Again, a bit of a nuance in knowledge if you didn't know about this, um, but I'm going to show you an example of this actually in SQL Server Management Studio. I'm just going to continually run this. So it actually, the new ID produces random IDs, like I said, 128-bit integer values. Um, and these, these are always unique, so you can just generate these as standard. So that works great um, within SQL Server Management Studio, but how have we went and got random IDs from our table values? Well, it returns a GUID, so Globally Unique Identifier. These may be referred to as a UUID in other versions of SQL. 
Um, however, when we use this new ID function in the order by clause, this returns a set of random rows from our selected table. It can be known for poor performance in larger databases, so a suitable, more performant alternative may be the new sequential ID where you increase in sequential um, steps and that might take some of the legwork away. So as usual, if you like this, co uh, this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and share and let me know if you want more of these episodes.